Hey y'all, Blake here from the Southern Cowboy. And today, I'll be reviewing for the summer, I'll be reviewing my Levi's 527s. Let's get straight into it. So, for those who don't know what Levi's is, basically, in somewhere in the 1900s, like in the 19th century, a man, a Jewish man, traveled to California and then sold pants and like canvas clothing and all that stuff, right? Until he met like a guy who knew how to reinforce trousers with copper rivets. And till then they made the first modern blue jean, the 501s. And ever since, Levi's have been making great quality denim. And the, this was the first blue jean before Wrangler, Lee, um, Cinch, and all that type of stuff. So this was the first ever company that made the first ever blue jean. And now they still make some good quality jeans. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, so you don't wear a Wrangler, okay. Wait, no, Cowboy, okay. First of all, that's false. Before y'all start getting on that uh, hater wagon, okay? Let me just explain something for you, okay? Levi's was the first before Wrangler, okay? And I am not the only cowboy that wears Levi's. There are two cowboys, and they're bull riders. That is Derek Kobaba. He's been wearing Levi's ever since he was a kid. He is a professional bull rider. And not just that, they made um, a jean style after him called the Western Fit. And he is Levi's number one, almost like buyer, for he wears them a lot. He wears the five and ones, five seventeens, and uh, the Western Fit. And it's Cody Teal, a PBR rider. He wears the five seventeens, the Western Fit, and that's it. But he is one, uh, the second of Levi's best bull riders. And he's been wearing Levi's ever since he was a kid as well. Now, so there are still some cowboys that wear Levi's, and there's cowboys that wear Wrangler. So, what is the difference? Wrangler has this, like, what I like to call um, basket weave almost. Like, they have broken twill, it's called. Yeah, broken twill. So therefore, if you were to lean like this or this, it would supposedly not break. Lee has like a left twill, and they get a fuzzy feel after you wash them. And Levi's was the first to come out with this twill. It's called right hand twill. So it's made like the twill is like right side. Alright, so that's first. Now, that's out of the way. Um, I have two 527s. The ones I'm wearing right now are the regular ones. This is 99% cotton and 1% elastane. So, these are like 11 ounces or something like that. And uh, these fit like about here on the waist. Um, and yeah, now I used to wear Wrangler a lot. Don't get me wrong, I used to think they were good. But I realized something that Wrangler, they kept breaking within three months for some reason. Like, 
My first pair of Wrangler were 13 MWCs, and they were good, but they kept breaking within three months. And the worst part, it would break in, like it would rip in the butt area, and I did not like that. And I just said, you know what, I'm not going to get any more. Like, don't get me wrong, Wrangler, I mean, yeah, I understand you all like those. But me, I just don't like them because they don't fit me right. They rip within three months, and yeah, that's it. So I switched to Levi's, and uh, these fit well. And uh, the only pair of pants I wear are 517. I wear 99% of the time. The 527s I wear in the summer because they're um, stretch pants and they're lightweight. So these are the premium. Now these, because of this letter patch, these will cost you on Levi's website a hundred bucks. Yeah, a hundred bucks for a pair of pants. Probably thinking, mm, I would rather spend forty. Okay, would you rather? Spend 40 on a pair of pants that's gonna rip in three months or something that's gonna last you a long time. Um, and these I would wear out to dinner. So, you're probably wondering, um, okay, is there any denim brands that are made in the US? Yes, there are, okay? However, um, I'll explain to you right now before I get to the fit completely. Um, basically, there are two brands in the U.S., okay? Two, okay? Right? First one is Brave... Uh, no, Brave Star Salvaged. Sorry, uh, out of voice crack. So, Brave Star... Here, let me pull it up for you. So, Brave Star is out of... I believe Los Angeles... Um, yeah, Los Angeles, California. These guys are known for making salvage denim, raw denim, at an affordable price. Now, raw denim, like raw salvage denim, normally would be about 300 to 500 bucks. Correct? But Brave Star sells them for, like, a good, good price. Like, they recently made... A uh, boot cut called a Mojave or Mojave cut, and how many ounces depends how long your jeans will last. So, there's two Mojave cuts. They have the Mojave Western cut, um, and this is 14.75 ounce cotton, so it's 100% cotton. Redline Japanese salvage denim, and then they have one that's 16.5 ounce uppercut Japanese salvage denim. So they have two um, denim jeans. They have Japanese denim and cone mill denim. All right. Now what they do is they make everything in the U.S. from the patch, like the leather patch, is made of a steer hide. So here, let me try to pull up what this Mojave cut looks. I don't know if you see that, but that's the Mojave cut or Mojave. Um, the patch is made of a steer hide. Um, the rivets they get in the U.S. The only thing that is not in the U.S. that they make is their like fabric, their Japanese denim fabric from Japan. That's it. They have cone milled denim and they have Japanese denim, so they kind of have a collection almost. So I will be doing a review on the Brave Star Selvage denim. I will do a review on this. And there's another company that's trying to bring back Made in the USA. 
and it's called Origin U Attack. So what they're doing is they're trying to bring back American manufacturing, being that everything is now being made in like China, Bangladesh, and all that type of stuff, right? And they explained in a video that I saw that your dollars, your like US dollars don't stay here. They get shipped overseas fighting for a different cause. And basically, that is not a good thing. Um, so, they're trying to bring back the U.S. manufacturing. And you know what? That's actually good, because... It's true, our stuff does get shipped overseas nowadays. And, uh... Yeah. So, here... They recently made a boot cut um, for the the Cowboys, right? This is called Origin Work Jeans Boot Cut. This is 84 or 86% cotton, 12% polyester, and 2% spandex. And you could tell this, they have a triple stitching, which not many jeans have that. And they have this. So, they get the cotton from Texas. Um, I think they get the, the Fred and the Rivets. No, the Rivets from Kentucky. Stitching is from Virginia and all that. So, yeah, they, not a single thing they have is imported. So that, you know what, that's hard for a company to do. And these are 130 Now, I know what you're saying. 130 bucks for a pair of jeans made in the U.S. Well, you know what? That's actually not a bad deal, and here's why. Because everything's shipped overseas, everything's going to be cheaper. Right? So, if it's made here, you're gonna likely find it's expensive. Like, if you were to live in uh, Canada and it was made in Canada, it would be expensive. Okay? If it was made in the country you live in, it's gonna be pricey. That's the thing. And, but yeah, I'm gonna be doing a review on Origins Denim as well. And, yeah, so, that's going to be a review you have to stay tuned for. Now, Levi's, I want to say Levi's, they, um, they do get your, their jeans, like, their jeans are made in Bangladesh, China, Mexico, right? Uh, and now they don't make their jeans in the U.S. anymore. Same with uh, Wrangler, right? So, the only denim I buy from Levi's, again, I buy the 517s, the 527s, and uh, I mostly wear the 517s. That's it. Now... That's, um, that's really it, um, but, now let's get back to the, um, the review, okay? So I'm, I need to take my belt off just so I can show you what I mean by the rise. Um, cause I feel like, uh, it's kind of blocking the patch. Okay, belt's off. Let me move this. And as you can see, it's really a good rise here. So, it kind of stops around here. Which is not bad, okay? It's not bad. And I do like how these are 
more um, whiskered something. I think that's what they call it. But you know what? Let's take this outside so I can show you the whole thing on what I'm talking about. All right, so we're outside and this is what the jeans look like, okay? They're like this style is like their um medium wash I wanna say and as you can see this is more of a, um, a roomy fit so it gives you more like leg room I noticed their pocket is down here because back then these a lot more often it was here so let me show you a good example back then when they would sit like this right when they would sit like that um they didn't want their stuff to fall out so what they did is they put it a bit lower here and because of that their, their stuff doesn't fall out at all and that is extremely a good thing that I do like about these jeans because I do remember when I was wearing Wrangler their like back pockets were right here and whenever I was sitting down a few things would fall out right so that's one thing I noticed now this the pockets are a good size so like here if you have one of these, um, for example, another good example of why they did this is because, yeah, let me just put y'all right here. Another good example why they did that is because back then they, um, there were not many, I want to say there wasn't wallets invented. I'm not completely sure on that, but yeah. But over time, over time, um, the first pair of jeans had like one pocket on the back, I believe. Then over time, they added two uh, back pockets. So they kind of changed them over time with the modern world. And let's just say you have one of these wallets. Also, shout out to Danny Cullen, by the way, for making my wallet, the Rattler. I called this the Blake, so shout out to Danny. Um, if you had a wallet like this in like, for example, the 1950s or something, if you have a Roper wallet, the good thing that I like about these jeans, like the Levi's Strauss jeans that they make with their pocket is because they're kind of here, I can actually put this right here just like so and it is like that so therefore it's right here you have half of it stick up like that that's it um, and for my phone I could do the same thing just put it right here you're all good now, I know some of y'all put your phones here. I don't do that, but if that's you, that's you. And another thing I would like to point out is that this pocket, you're probably wondering what that pocket for. Why is there a fifth pocket like here? So another thing that I should note is because Levi's was made in the 1800s, back then, they um most people obviously phones weren't invented till like the 20th century like i think they were invented in the 1980s but i could be wrong but anyway. but yeah so this pocket right here was actually for your pocket watch now they even said on their TikTok because they had like a thing, something. What's this for? Or something? Or did you know from TikTok from Levi's? 
So this is for your pocket watch. Because back then, people used to have a pocket watch to tell the time. And they would put their pocket watch here and all that type of stuff. So therefore, if they need their pocket watch and they or they weren't wearing a vest or any of that, they would easily put their pocket watch in here and take it out and be like, check the time and put it back. So yeah, most people would, some people would wear a vest with a pocket watch chain and put their watch like this. But others who didn't wear a vest with a pocket watch chain would put it in this, what I like to call the pocket watch pocket. That's what it was for. Um, and these, these are really good. And let me tell you, these just pretty much out, right out the box, right out the box. You don't have to break these in a lot because they are so stretchy. And being that they're stretchy, they're actually really good. So yeah. So these I got in New York City. And when I got them, I checked the tag obviously to see what percent of cotton they were. They were 99% cotton and 1% elastane. These are made in Mexico, so it's not made in Bangladesh or China. So I thought, you know what, that's good. I just have this one rule. As long as it's made well, I'm fine. But if it's made horribly, no. That's my only rule. And uh, if something's made in Mexico, Canada, or the USA, I instantly buy it. I mean, yeah, I have a few uh, clothing items that are not made in the US, but they work well. Alright. So, yeah, these are good. Now let me get back inside and show you all the premium line. Okay, we are back outside. Now, what I'm wearing now is the 527s from their premium line, okay? Now, right off the bat, I noticed a bit of a difference with the regular and the premium 527s, okay? These are a little more, I don't know, like, these are also 99% cotton and 1% elastane. However, I notice a little bit of a difference. The stitching is a little uh, done nicer with these. Like, if you can see that, the stitching right here. I don't know if you can see that here. Let me let me show you what I'm talking about. It might be rough, um, but the stitching. Oh, it's a little on there, sewn on nicely. And the ones I were wearing, they're sewn on like with a different type of stitching, right? Now, I noticed these are a little more, they have a little more weight to them, right? They're not heavy, but at the same time, they're not light like those. So it's like between heavy and light. You get what I mean? Um, so, the color I'm wearing is, um, this is like a retro color almost. I believe this is like retro indigo, something like that. I'll have to look, but yeah, I think these are a little better than the ones I was wearing. Of course, we have the pocket watch here this you and you can also see I don't know if you see that but you could see that over here the rivets the copper rivets right here have lettering and then obviously this has a letter patch right here I am a size 34 34 and um, let's see the zipper it's the same um, these the belt loops right here they're like sewn in really good and um these are more they're not 
well, I mean, they're soft, but they're not so soft and so light where they feel like they're going to break within like a year and a half or two, right? You get my point? Now, let me show y'all what it looks like over the boot. Because I know that's what y'all have been waiting for, mostly. Because, um, you want to see what it looks like over a boot. So, the toe shape I'm wearing, obviously, I'm wearing my ML Letty's Venclero Bull Hide. Shrunken Bull Hide. And this is a French toe. So, here's something for you, okay? I'm put y'all right here. You can see that it's these have more room, a, a bit more room here and here than the ones I normally wear in my videos, the 517s. Now, over here, you could see that they don't really stack on the heel at all. Unless you have that 100% cotton 527s. Um, but, yeah, over here, they don't really stack. So, if I were to do, like, sit down for a split sec, they look like they're stacking, right? But the second I get up, the second I get up, they're really just like over right over here I mean I, I don't complain over that I'm not complaining I just noticed that I kind of like it only negative is that if it's like very very wet like let's just say it's a rainy day and it's all muddy outside right if you have these sagging like that and you somehow, you know, go in the mud by an accident or something. That will, like, just get mud on you easily. So, if you want to avoid that with these types of jeans, what I would do, and do not laugh, because back in the days, they actually uh, used to tuck their jeans for a reason, okay? What I do is, I would simply... and. Um, there were two, well, three different styles. There's the modern style, which you have your jeans like this, right? Which most cowboys wear them like this. Right? And then there's the style that's still popular today, but it's only for salvage denim. So here, there were cowboys who used to cuff their jeans, right? Like this. Now, me, I don't do that at all. I mean, do I think it's cool? Yeah, but I think it would look better with salvage denim, in my opinion. Okay, this is my opinion. So before you start yelling in that comment section, don't yell, because I just said it's my opinion. So this was uh, a popular style when Levi's came out. And it's still a popular style today where you cuff your jeans over your boot like that. I don't do it. Again, I'll only do it if I have salvage jeans sometimes. Man. <sighs> Kinda took in the bad but you get my point. Yeah, and then there's this one style that if you were like, for example, working in that field, right? If you were working, and let's just say it's actually raining real bad, or you're a railroad worker. Back then, before the shaft was like this, um, what they would do, the shaft would be a little more circular. Like, almost like a equestrian shaft. Um, so what they would do is they would tuck their jeans in their boot to protect them from, uh, like to protect their legs from the elements. 
So they would go like this. What they would do is they tuck their jeans like all the way in because before it was like this, you would tuck them, make sure all your, um, like it's all the way down there. But because my boot is like this, it's like right here. So let me just do this one, show you all what I'm talking about. Okay. So look, shaft. And the shaft can affect um, a pair of pants, kind of, for how you tuck them. And I'll do this if it's like really, really wet out. That's it. That is only it. So if it's like flooded out, I'll tuck them in. I'll tuck my jeans in my boot. I'll go over the water. And it's so simple. It's so simple. Yeah, some people, well, mostly women use this as a fashion statement and all. Men don't do it a lot anymore because they'll say, oh, if you do that, you ain't no cowboy. No, 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 no. If it's raining out, then that's when you should do it. That's it. That's the rule. Now, look, so as you see, like that. Something like that, right? They would do this because if it was raining or the water was like up to here, they put them in and their jeans wouldn't get wet at all. So this is what it looks like, okay? I know I look stupid, but I'm just showing this for an educational purpose. Okay, just to prove a point here. But yeah, they used to do that. It's not common anymore for people to do that. I mean, there are still some people who will do it to protect their boot. Um, and yeah, so if you're a guy just doing it for a fashion statement, don't do it. But if you're doing it because it's extremely wet outside, okay, that's when you should do it. That's it. Only tuck in your jeans when it's when the water is about here or if it's extremely wet outside or if it's raining. That's it. Or you just need to actually protect your legs while grabbing. But yeah. So here's my thoughts on these jeans. They are extremely good for the summer. They're stretchy. They have a good amount of stretch where if you need to pick something up, you could go like this and grab it like that, okay? Like, for example, if I had my wallet fall out, I could go like this and just get it, retrieve it, boom, done, right? pocket dog sorry about that but uh hey you can easily retrieve your stuff so therefore if you need to pick something up uh you do not have to worry about your jeans ripping in the buttocks area and get embarrassed you don't have to worry about that and yeah so if you were also riding a horse um, if you were also riding a horse, um, including in today's modern age, you could just sit like this and it won't rip. That's it. So these are extremely good. And I do recommend these for the summertime. Like if you live in a humid area like me, I wear these in the summer and sometimes in the spring if it's extremely hot out i know what you're saying so you're probably saying okay so you're telling me that you wear a felt hat all year round including in the summer 
which I do wear a felt hat year round, like from, I wear a felt hat year round, including in the summer. I know what you're gonna say, uh, you're gonna think it's kind of weird, but it's not, because people, the straw hat was only made by Stetson as a marketing tactic, and that's the truth right there, okay? So really, a straw hat was only made for a marketing tactic, for a marketing um, tactic, that's it. Um, but yeah, back then the use of wear felt hats year round, including in the summer. Um, so, really, I wear these in the summer, um, and maybe in the spring if it's extremely hot out. But 99% of the time, I wear my Levi's 517s. So I hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. And stay tuned. I'll see y'all um, tomorrow. Hey, Blake here. Um, after editing the video. Um, I forgot to mention in the video that... I will be doing a review next week on Burns Custom Hats. So make sure you stay tuned for that. I will be getting my Burns uh, Pure Beaver Hat Tuesday. And I'll be reviewing it next Friday. Make sure you stay tuned for that review. Um, so thank you all for watching. Stay Southern.